If you've watched a lot of our Why Buy SUV reviews, you'll notice that when we get to the section on is it fun to drive, there's always one vehicle we're using as a benchmark. It's the Mazda CX-5. Since its introduction in 2012, it's really been impressive in showing that a compact, affordable crossover could actually be entertaining on your daily commute. Unfortunately, the first CX-5 was also really loud inside, and it had a very stiff ride and didn't offer as much equipment as its competitors. But this refreshed 2017 CX-5 aims to rectify those downsides while also improving on the car's styling and its fun-to-drive character. Let's see if all of Mazda's updates have paid off. How does it look? This is the best looking small crossover you can buy for the money. Mazda's design language called Kodo does a wonderful job with playing with light over its crisp sheet metal. This refreshed model takes a lot of design inspiration from the larger CX-9 crossover, particularly with that pronounced pointed nose. The slick modern styling works well with this machine gray paint color and the 19 inch wheels that are exclusive to the Grand Touring trim level. How's the storage? Though not quite as roomy as some rivals, the CX-5's cargo area is very spacious overall. You get 31 cubic feet of storage space with the back seats up, and up to 60 cubic feet with them down. Now those numbers are actually a little lower than on last year's CX-5, but Mazda says that's primarily just because the roof's a little bit lower than before. But let's put it to the test by putting our luggage from away back there. Storage in the center console compartment is tight, though there's a space to rest your phone up front and two big cup holders. Mazda redesigned the car's door speakers this year, meaning the door pockets can be much bigger than before. Is it roomy? I have no complaints about room in front, and I can easily adjust the power seat to find a comfortable driving position that affords me a great view out over the hood. Rear seat space is also good for adults, and new this year, the back seat also reclines, and it's not at quite such a steep upright angle as before. What you can't see is that Mazda also focused on making it easier to get in and out of the back seat. The door panel is thinner and the door now opens at a wider angle. That'll be handy if you're lugging car seats in and out. How does the interior feel? Just like the outside, the inside of the CX-5 is a real step up in terms of design compared to most of its competition. It's a nice place to be with really nice materials that look and feel great. I mean, this wood trim over here wouldn't look out of place in a luxury model. But there's also a lot of steps that Mazda took to make the cabin easier to use on the 2017 version. The shifter and the door handles were repositioned slightly so they were easier to reach, for instance. The steering wheel controls have been simplified, and there's a new rim design so it's easier to hold. Couple that with other tweaks like improved visibility from a smaller A-pillar sail panel, and you have a car that's really, really functional as well as pretty. This cabin is a great place to spend time. Is it well equipped? With three trim levels and a few option packages, the CX-5 offers most of the technology and convenience features that we've come to expect from this class. On this loaded up Grand Touring model specifically, we've got things like a sunroof, active safety tech with adaptive cruise control, a color head-up display with traffic sign recognition, LED headlights, and even a Bose 10-speaker sound system. This year, Mazda also added a lot of features that were already offered by rival SUVs, notably a power lift gate, a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, and rear USB ports. Some things you still won't find, however, include wireless phone charging, a kicked open lift gate, and a surround view camera. How's the infotainment system? Mazda's infotainment system has a clear 7 inch display with great functionality. It is a touch screen, but most of the touch controls are disabled when you're on the move, so it's best to use the rotary controller instead. There aren't many G Wiz extra features, but the included navigation, phone, music, and other controls all work very well. It doesn't offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto support, though Mazda says those features are under development. Is it a good daily driver?
As much as I always liked getting behind the wheel of the old CX-5, it always drove me crazy how loud and uncomfortable it was. I remember driving one down the highway at 75 miles an hour and I had to turn the radio all the way up to the maximum just to hear it over the wind and road noise. And the ride would chatter and shudder and crash over every little pothole too. Fortunately, this refresh 2017 has fixed both of those problems. For starters, Mazda engineers went crazy with adding lots more sound insulation. There's an extra seal on the doors, there's carpeting instead of plastic in the trunk, there's underbody insulation, lots of other insulation everywhere. And this car really is remarkably quiet. I don't have any objective numbers to back it up, but it sounds to me just as quiet as some of the segment leaders like the Honda CRV. The ride is also so much more pleasant than before. It's not so stiff over every little imperfection and there's a lot more compliance. Mazda deliberately made the suspension softer because they realized that customers were complaining about that. So as a daily driver, the CX-5 is lovely and has fixed any of those complaints that I had before about the old one. Is it fun to drive? This is what made us love the CX-5 in the first place and the refresh 2017 is still really fun to drive. Even though the suspension is a little bit softer for ride comfort, there's still a lot of precision in there. Really great steering with very natural weight to it, a lot of control and composure from the chassis when you go through turns. I first drove this car out in Southern California on some really twisty roads, and I was amazed at how much fun I was having in a family SUV. The only engine choice is a two and a half liter inline four. There used to be a two liter base engine, but that's gone away because not many people bought it anyway. You still get 185 pound-feet of torque, and then three more horsepower for a total of 187. One thing that I really appreciate is that, unlike many of its competitors, the six-speed automatic transmission in the CX-5 downshifts really, really readily when you give it some more gas. Overall, I guess I would describe the power from this engine as adequate for this car. It doesn't blow you away with how quick it is. I think the fun comes from how eagerly this car takes turns and how great the brakes and steering feel. Ultimately, the CX-5 feels a lot like other Mazdas that we really like, everything from the 3 to the MX-5 Miata, in that it just feels good. It's responsive and nimble and eager to do what you want. It really is fun to drive. How's the fuel economy? Fuel economy ratings are actually down slightly for the refreshed CX-5, in part because the EPA ratings method was a little stricter for 2017. For a front-wheel drive model like this, you can expect 24 miles per gallon city and 31 mpg highway. That's behind a comparable Honda CR-V, but still very good for the class. Unlike many rivals, there is no stop-start function to help save fuel. How much is it? This is a pretty much fully loaded Grand Touring model and it costs just under 33,000 as it sits here. That might sound like a lot, but Mazda tells me that nearly half of all CX-5 buyers do elect this top trim level. Pricing for the CX-5 starts at about $24,000 for the base sport model and $26,000 for the mid-grade Touring. Adding all-wheel drive on any trim costs $1,300. What are the negatives? Looked at objectively, the CX-5 isn't the segment leader in terms of fuel efficiency or cargo space. And when you compare it like for like against its competition, the Mazda tends to be a little bit more expensive too. Who should buy it? The Mazda CX-5 is the best looking, best driving crossover in its segment. So it really appeals to drivers who want something a little more special than the norm. Now, as we talked about, there are other SUVs that perform better in some objective measurements. But the thing about the CX-5 is that it's not necessarily the SUV you decide to buy or need to buy. It's the one that you want to buy. If you liked this Why Buy video, be sure to scroll down and click the like button and leave us a comment if you've got any more questions about the CX-5. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a new Why Buy every Thursday as well as tons of other great video content. And you can follow us on all of your favorite social media apps, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, motor1.com.